First, we turn to the International Court of Justice, where public hearings have just concluded on the provisional measures requested by Guyana in its ongoing territorial dispute with Venezuela. We'll delve into the details of these hearings, which focus on preventing actions related to Venezuela's territorial claims ahead of their scheduled referendum. Next, a tragic turn of events in West Coast Barbies, where a fierce fire raised the home of a vendor and her family. We'll bring you the details of this devastating incident, the response from the emergency services, and the family pleads for support in their time of need. Then we shift our focus to a nationwide effort aimed at enhancing understanding and participation in Guyana's growing petroleum sector. We'll explore how these workshops aim to dispel misconceptions and ensure a more inclusive distribution of benefits from the petroleum sector. Turning to regional news, Brazil is currently grappling with a severe heat wave with record-breaking temperatures and red alerts issued across the country. We'll explore the impact of this unbearable heat on millions and the possible connections to climate change and the El Nino phenomenon. And finally, on the global diplomatic front, Chinese President Xi Jinping has arrived in the U.S. for the APEC summit and a highly anticipated meeting with President Joe Biden. We'll bring you the latest updates and insights from Al Jazeera's correspondent in San Francisco. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Update for November 15, 2023. I am Bibi Backus. Thank you for joining us. First up, the International Court of Justice has wrapped up public hearings on the provisional measures requested by Guyana in the ongoing case concerning the arbitral award of October 3, 1899, Guyana versus Venezuela. The hearings, held on November 14th and 15th of 2023, centered on Ghana's plea for provisional measures to prevent Venezuela from taking actions related to its territorial claims ahead of a scheduled referendum on December 3rd, 2023. Ghana initiated the case in 2018 to affirm the validity of the 1899 Arbitral Award, which outlined the land boundary between Venezuela and British Guyana, now Guyana. The dispute arose when Venezuela contested the award on the eve of Ghana's independence, challenging the international boundary recognized for over 60 years. The recent hearings addressed Ghana's concerns about Venezuela's planned referendum, particularly questions 3 and 5, which seek to reject the jurisdiction of the ICJ and establish a new Venezuelan state in Ghana's execrable region. Ghana argued that such actions would amount to an unlawful annexation of its territory, violating fundamental principles of international law. Ghana represented its case on November 14th, with Venezuela following on November 15th. The ICJ president has indicated that the court will provide its decision to the parties as soon as possible. Ghana is optimistic that the court will rule in its favor, emphasizing the adherence to international law. Both parties involved in the long-standing territorial dispute now eagerly await the ICJ's decision on the provisional measures. In other news, a fierce fire raised the home of 58-year-old vendor Sukwanti Ramnarine and her family at No. 64 Village, West Coast Burries, on Tuesday, November 14. The incident, which unfolded around 6 p.m., has left the family without shelter. Ramnarine's son shared that their mother had gone to border market and the family had spent the entire day at a friend's place not far from their residence. Around 6 p.m., one of the sons, still at the friend's home, noticed smoke bellowing from their home. Realizing the imminent danger, he rushed home and discovered the house engulfed in flames. Quick to respond, firefighters from the Unverbach Fire Station arrived at the scene, battling and eventually extinguishing the blaze. Tragically, the home was uninsured, leaving the 60-year-old woman and her two sons not only homeless, but also grappling with significant losses resulting from the fire. As the family cope with the aftermath, they urgently need support and assistance. Anyone willing to contribute to rebuilding and helping the family recover can contact Sukwanti Ramnarine at 675-9448. 
In a horrifying incident during the early hours of Saturday last, 46-year-old taxi driver Sean Smith faced a life-threatening assault at Ruby Back Dam East Bank Estipable. The assailants, described as Spanish-speaking individuals, reportedly stabbed, chopped, and robbed Smith, leaving him nursing severe injuries to his neck and other body parts. The nightmarish ordeal unfolded around 1 a.m. when Smith was hired by five men at a Parika Junction for a trip to Ruby Back Dam. As they approached the destination, Smith inquired about the remaining distance, triggering a sudden and brutal attack. The passenger in the front seat reportedly began stabbing him with a knife, demanding cash and his phone. Despite complying by handing over the cash, the assault persisted. Dragged out of the car, Smith endured further violence, including kicks to the head. The attackers attempted to sever his head with a grass knife, prompting a desperate move for survival. Smith played dead. The assailants eventually fled the scene, leaving Smith and the car behind. Smith with his neck wrapped in a jersey, sought refuge at a nearby house, pleading for assistance. He was subsequently transported to the Leonora Cottage Hospital for treatment. The incident was reported to the police and an investigation is underway. Stick around when we return. Government's Adequate Housing Initiative transforms lives in Region 3 and government plans nationwide workshops to educate on local content act. Problem, Granny. I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Modern Optical Services. 316 Mill Street, Georgetown. Telephone 226 Welcome to Kasum's Furniture. Find everything you need for your home and more under one roof in our newly decorated showroom. Our locally crafted furniture has been perfected over the last 60 years. From our hands to your home, we also bring to you our newly introduced lines of imported furniture and sleep center where you can find a wide range of beds and mattresses. Kisun's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 60 years. When you need money and you gotta get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231 7878 and 223 8955. Hello, my fellow TikTok followers! He is credit! And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fetters, and spice cake. For the noodles, all we these will be using peppies, black pepper, kasri, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, fried spice, and our purpose seasoning. Next, this chicken that we marinate it, soak for all you want to know nothing with peppies, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and document clarity flour, and then this butter we make with this quick piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boil in oil. We serve with peppies, barbecue sauce. Radical went to the supermarket, and she proper buy up enough, enough things. She feels she alone can cook, but she wrote the name wrong. It's shaped like a guy in a mop. Peppies <laughs> has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies, we put the pep back into your kitchen.
Minister of Natural Resources Vikram Barant announced that the government would conduct sensitization workshops nationwide by year-end to educate citizens, particularly in the hinterland and distant regions, on the significance of the Local Content Act. The workshops will highlight the vast opportunities available to various communities through the Act's provisions, ensuring a more inclusive distribution of benefits. Minister Barat emphasized the importance of dispelling the perception that only urban areas benefit from the legislation, stating that the initiative reflects the government's commitment to the country's active participation in the petroleum sector. The government also pledges ongoing reviews to enhance the Act and optimize benefits for the people of Guyana. The workshop will provide insights to evaluate the country's capacity for potential updates to the first schedule of the Act, outlining specific services that oil and gas companies must procure from the local entities. Minister Barat stressed the positive impact of the legislation, encouraging local partnerships and fostering optimism within the private sector. In other news, in a continued effort to improve living conditions and provide housing solutions, the government has delivered keys to five residents in Under Neeming and Lost and Rust Region 3 under the Adequate Housing and Urban Accessibility Program. The initiative, specifically the Core Home Project, aims to uplift the lives of vulnerable families in the region. Minister of Housing and Water Colin Kroll handed over the keys to the new homeowners. Along with the keys, beneficiaries also receive their certificates of inspection. Each core home, constructed under the supervision of engineers from CHMPA's project department and staff of the community development department, includes two bedrooms, a kitchen and washroom facility. The construction process ensures that the homes meet the specifications outlined by Inter-American Development Bank. The initiative has garnered positive responses from the recipients who expressed joy and gratitude for the transformative impact on their lives. Don't go away after the break. New UK Cabinet, Prime Minister Sunak holds first cabinet meeting and a nightmare. Israeli forces raid main Gaza hospital, interrogate patients. Let our professional team examine and prescribe what's best for your eyes. Happy smiles make fashionable faces. See us for a full line of optical services, including brand name and prescription eyewear. Modern Optical Services. 316 Mill Street, Georgetown. Telephone 226-1082. Hello, my fellow TikTok followers. He is credit. And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fetters, and poise cake. For the noodles, all we need will be using peppies, black pepper, kasri, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, white spice, and our purpose. Season. Next, this chicken that we marinate it, soak for all you don't know nothing with peppers, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and document clarity flour, and then this butter we make with this big piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boil in oil. We serve with peppers, barbecue sauce. Radhika went to the supermarket and she proper buy up nothing of things. She feels she alone can cook, but she wrote in even wrong. He shaped like a guy in a mop. Peppers <laughs> has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies. We put the pep back into your kitchen. Good, good girl, forget things. Good. Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for do a surgery. I was dancing on a fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. When you need money and you gotta get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4-6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, 
be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Welcome to Kisoon's Furniture. Find everything you need for your home and more under one roof in our newly decorated showroom. Our locally crafted furniture has been perfected over the last 60 years. From our hands to your home, we also bring to you our newly introduced lines of imported furniture and sleep center where you can find a wide range of beds and mattresses. Kisun's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 60 years. Welcome back. Now let's take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. Red alerts have been issued for almost 3,000 towns and cities across Brazil, which have been experiencing an unprecedented heat wave. Rio de Janeiro recorded 42.5 degrees Celsius on Sunday, a record for November, and high humidity on Tuesday meant that it felt like 58.5 degrees Celsius. Municipal authorities have said more than 100 million people have been affected by the heat, which is expected to last until at least Friday. Officials have attributed it to the El Nino phenomenon and climate change. Internationally, UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has held his first meeting with his newly reshuffled cabinet. The inclusion of former Prime Minister David Cameron as Foreign Secretary was a major surprise and may indicate a shift towards more centrist policies. Al Jazeera's Sonia Gallego reports. He was dismissed as yesterday's man, yet former Prime Minister David Cameron walked into Number 10 Downing Street in his new role as Foreign Secretary for Tuesday's Cabinet meeting. We build partnerships with our friends, we deter our enemies and we keep our country strong. That's why I'm doing the job and I'm delighted to accept. He may not be a new face at the table, but it is a new position for the man who left his mark on the UK by enabling its exit from the European Union. It was Cameron who called the referendum on Brexit. We have to ensure that the Conservative Party reflects the changes that the country has faced, reflects uh, the issues that affect people today. That's exactly what the Prime Minister is concentrating on now. He is a cabinet of experience, but also younger people with new ideas as well coming into it. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's cabinet reshuffling may have not as come as a complete surprise, especially after comments made by the previous Home Secretary Suella Braverman, whose hawkish style angered many within the Conservative Party, and after a week where she called homelessness a lifestyle choice, dubbed London rallies for a ceasefire in Gaza as hate marches, and denounced police forces as biased, it was clear something had to give. While David Cameron may have his own baggage to contend with, his place in the cabinet would indicate that the Prime Minister has a more centrist approach to politics in mind, especially when it comes to foreign policy. The challenge facing Cameron now will be how to navigate Sunak's foreign policy at a time of escalating tensions, where diplomacy will be key to finding a resolution. Sonia Gallego, Al Jazeera, London. Israeli forces raided Gaza's Al Shifa hospital on Wednesday after laying siege of the enclave's largest medical facility for days. They have blown up a warehouse of medical equipment and tanks are inside its courtyard. Al Jazeera's Osama bin Javid reports. Israeli forces have raided the largest hospital in Gaza after weeks of siege and attacks on the complex. The operation on the Al-Shifa compound started in the early hours after medical staff received a warning call. One doctor recorded his call with the Israeli army. The hallways are full of people. All floors of the hospital are full of people, from floor one through to six. You keep saying if this will create a problem for you, if you want to enter and see for yourself, the hospital is full of people. The reception and surgery unit is full of displaced people. Dialysis unit is full of people. Delivery, radiology, administration are empty. In the burns unit on the right side of the hospital, that's full of patients and full of displaced people too. Doctors reported scenes of chaos as tanks moved inside the main gates. 
Israeli soldiers reportedly entered buildings to search every room and corridor and interrogated doctors and medical staff. Before communications were cut off, here's what one doctor told Al Jazeera. It's really horrible here. It has been continuous bombing and I've seen two tanks uh, getting in the gate, the main gate, the eastern gate of Shifa Hospital and they were inside Shifa Hospital. The, uh, you know, the, the bombing and the shooting, you can hear it in the ground, it didn't stop at all. Sometimes it's really, really very, very dense. So, uh, so again, the hospital is full of patients. We have civilians within the hospital sheltering. There are families with kids, with ladies, and we have the medical staff. So imagine how scary is that to the, everyone here within the hospital. The Israeli army warned staff it would investigate every building and person inside the complex. Based on intelligence information and an operational necessity, IDF forces are carrying out a precise and targeted operation against Hamas in a specified area in the Shifa hospital. Since the war in Gaza began, thousands of people have taken shelter here. That's in addition to hundreds of staff and doctors already in the facility. The military is reported to have told everyone to gather in the courtyard before being moved from the hospital. But many are afraid to move after some were shot at when they tried to leave the compound. For weeks, doctors have denied Israeli claims that Al-Shifa hospital is used by Hamas's leadership to carry out operations. The Israeli government released an animation it said supported its claim but failed to provide any proof. That claim has also been repeated by the U.S. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby, but again, not substantiated. The Israeli raid began only hours after he made the statement. International humanitarian law protects hospitals Israel says it doesn't apply because Hamas fighters use al-Shifa, but that claim is denied by the armed group, health authorities, hospital staff and witnesses in the hospital. And Gaza's most vulnerable, including dozens of babies, are struggling to survive as even hospitals are not spared during Israel's war on Gaza. Sama bin Javed, al -Dazair. And finally, Chinese President Xi Jinping is in San Francisco, where he will attend the APEC summit and meet with Joe Biden. Al Jazeera's Catherine Yu reports. Xi Jinping was a minor Communist Party official when he first visited San Francisco in 1985. He now returns as Chinese president and will meet U.S. leader Joe Biden in their first face-to-face -face encounter in a year. Taking place on the sidelines of the APEC summit, it's hoped this meeting will reduce rising tensions between the two world powers. It comes as both China and the U.S. face economic challenges. Both sides have a tremendous amount at stake. And it is better for them to have economic cooperation, even if it's limited, than it is for them to, uh, you know, on both sides, not only have uncertainties within their economies, but creating uncertainties in the global economy. Washington says the two countries are interdependent, but that hasn't stopped it from moving to de-risk when it comes to trade with China. It's called on US allies to do the same. The Biden administration has also blocked Beijing's access to crucial semiconductor chips and equipment and sanctioned Chinese technology firms for national security reasons. In the Asia-Pacific, the U.S. opposes China's militarization of the South China Sea, disputed territory claimed by Beijing, as well as pressure it puts on Taiwan, a self-governed island allied with Washington. On the global stage, China has been wanting to play a bigger role, strengthening ties with Russia despite condemnation from the West for its invasion of Ukraine and calling for an immediate ceasefire in the Gaza Strip, both positions opposed by the U.S. While the Xi Biden meeting is a key step towards improving U.S.-China relations, analysts say that geopolitical rivalry is here to stay. So what can be achieved? Both sides are keeping expectations low, but there are opportunities for cooperation. A new climate change working group has been announced, and Washington says it's keen to reopen lines of military communication, lines cut off by Beijing last August when former U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan. The two leaders are also expected to discuss stemming the tide of fentanyl to the U.S. and the regulation of artificial intelligence in drone weaponry. Katrina Yu, Al Jazeera, Beijing. This brings us to the end of our regional and global news coverage. Up next is the 3D weather forecast.
Safe TV2 headline news for this Wednesday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. You can tune in tomorrow at 6.30am for a rebroadcast and at 7pm for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other.